All right, so let's talk about shooting in 2K24. Players who play on Hall of Fame or comp online games will be playing with green or miss shot timing for the ultimate challenge. For those asking what ratings you need to be a consistent shooter, depends on your skill and shot IQ. Some will be deadly with a 75, others will go one for 10. Try out the build tester or the 2KU with different NBA players on Hall of Fame to get an idea what you gonna need for your build. This has been his response to that topic for the last couple years. So always aim for at least a 80 or above to be a really good three point shooter on 2K. It's to your benefit to create a jumper with the highest grades you can, but you can still be successful with lower grade shots. Defensive immunity is one I'd particularly recommend paying attention to it can have a stronger effect than most think so basically out of all the grade types for a custom jump shot you should look at defensive immunity most important because defenders being around you won't affect your shot as much and you can keep the same release timing as far as your jump shot timing you can now pick the point in the animation that you want for the ideal release instead of an arbitrary time jump set point push or release what this means is no matter what jump shot you got you can put when your eyes tells you to release it instead of 2k already having it set on that jumper especially the meta they'll find like the most obvious point to make a release time and, and a jump shot in the game so it'll be easy to create a meta generally all advanced shot types the spins the step backs they got a buff in the mid range and all advanced layups euros floaters reverse they got a buff too try to mix up your arsenal of scoring moves and you'll be rewarded this is my favorite news because 2K has a bunch of moves in the game that are absolutely useless. And this right here gives us a reason to try new things. For those of y'all that make the Michael Jordan videos, them Jason Tatum play style, for people on TikTok, this gives you more content because now you can actually do dumb shots and be benefited. You can shoot some dumb shots and have a good time. This adds to the fun of the game. After you green a release, your jump shot celebration will trigger outside of 15 feet. On 2K23, since the delayed green, they completely removed your jump shot animation. Sometimes it would trigger, but most of the time it wouldn't. Now he's saying it will always trigger and it'll be a delay so you'll still be surprised when you'll get a green it won't tell you initially like after you shoot the shot it won't immediately do a celebration it'll trigger when the green release triggers so it'll be a delay to your jump shot animation even after you shoot the shot meter can be controlled in a lot more ways now you can make it as big as you want on your screen you can make it anywhere you want it to be you can control it to only be a layup you could control it to only be a layup and free throw. You could control it to do whatever you want. And when you take off the shot meter, it's an extra 20% bonus. The last shooting update I want to tell you about. Variable shot timings have been toned down for 2K24. Also, we changed the shot timing impact shooting attribute to shot timing stability. Higher stability grades will further dampen the effects of fatigue slash defense on your shot speed. For those of you that did not like the shooting being changed to faster if a defender guarding you to slower if you get tired, all you have to do is upgrade your shot stability and your shot will be the same release timing as far as you would know. One of my favorite elements in NBA 2K24 is the dribble breakdowns. Each player has two versions. Regular breakdowns are done by flicking up on the right analog stick, and aggressive breakdowns are done by flicking up with sprint health. From my understanding of what Mike Wang is saying, if you flick up on the right stick, you'll activate a signature size up that you can walk out of at any time. Also, if you hold R2 while flicking up on the right stick, you'll activate a secondary signature size up that you can branch out of at any time. This is different from 2K23 because in 23 to activate your size ups, you had to flick the right stick up and then down repeatedly or you would have to flick the right stick down and then up repeatedly to activate those moves 
As far as attribute caps on dribbling to get signature styles, I really like Steph and Trey's moves, so I usually go to 92. The highest unlock is Steve Francis' sig size up at 95. I'm under the impression that this was the same thing at 23. I don't have it to check it out, but I'm here to assume y'all could correct me down in the comments. Adrenaline boosts are back, but have been redesigned to make both offense and defense more skill-based. I know we all are disappointed to hear adrenaline boosts being back, but they're supposedly to work in a totally different way now. Adrenaline boosts are back but have been redesigned to make both offense and defense more engaging at the same time. On offense, boosts are no longer lost when pulling off dribble moves, but boosts will disappear every time the on-ball defender can bump the ball handler on a drive attempt. So basically, dribbling should look like this. This type of body up will remove an adrenaline boost. Every time he gets bumped, he would be losing a boost right here. He would have lost one. This is what the community wants defense to look like in this game anyway. And that jump shot will be harder to make after you get bumped. So jump shooting will be tough to do after you get bumped on ball. And if a defender can constantly bump you, that will lower your jump shot ability. The more you get bumped in a possession and lose all your adrenaline bars, you're going to be forced to have a terrible jump shot. In my opinion, that just sounds like you need to rim run after you get bumped and lose all your adrenaline boost because you'll maintain speed, but you'll have a terrible jump shot now. So ultimately, you'll just need to run to the rim to try and score because jump shooting might be completely out the question. Mike Wang has already confirmed on Twitter that your finishing gets nerfed as well with losing adrenaline boost, but we all know dunking is easier than taking a jump shot. You won't lose adrenaline boost in the backcourt. Steal and block attempts will consume adrenaline bars on defense. Your first bar gone, which is 20% of your block or your steal rate. Two bars gone, 40% third bar gone 75% of your steal or block rating. Basically, if you reach or go for a block, you lose a bar. Just like in 2023. My problem with this is, what if I successfully block a shot, but the team get the rebound back? I lost a bar for playing great defense. Now the second shot attempt, I'm penalized. That's not fair to me. Also, the offense throw a bad pass, I deflect it out of bounds. I lose an adrenaline bar for playing great on-ball defense. Why am I being penalized? That's the part of the adrenaline boost on defense that I don't like. Paint defense was a major focus and was reported as the biggest gameplay improvement from our external playtest sessions. I think we have a real good balance right now. People make these 6-9 builds in the park and then they use them to get to the rim and I can't even stop them with my 6'10 center. So it is very, very obvious paint defense is a problem. If it's still a problem to the community standard, please let us know you're gonna add a patch to strengthen the defense because we do not need another year of this. Make sure that we can guard these players around the rim as easily as possible. The contest system has changed a lot. The main highlights, greater emphasis on body position instead of just hand location. Big reason for the ghost contest. Heavier penalties for being crowded at the start of your shot, less for out of position late closeouts. If somebody's standing in front of you when you start your jump shot, that sounds like a heavy contest, but if you're pretty open when you pull up and they start to run after you, you ain't gonna get contested as much. I hear something like this almost every year, and defense remotely the same, and I play it the same way. So I don't really know about contests. Ronnie2k uploaded a photo yesterday saying that the leveling system of multiplayer that we know and love about 2k is returning even though we have seasons and you won't get reset at the start of a new season so this is something you could work towards all year long this is what the community seems to have wanted and been asking for as well there is a new thing in 2k called the triple threat dance my question is, can you cancel out of the dance and start running? That's all I want to know. 
Because if I activate the triple threat dance, can I then start dribbling to get around my defender? Can I use it as another layer of a triple threat jab step and explode? Can I dance and then run to the rim? Like, I want to know. Because if I can't cancel out of it, it's a really useless feature. But if you could use it as another level of a jab step, it would be fun. Just to keep things simple about the change of takeover, it changed from this to this. You pick a category. If you pick finishing as your takeover, you get plus 10 to all your finishing attributes. You pick shooting, you get plus 10 to all these shooting right here. You pick playmaking, plus 10. Any of these categories you choose, it just goes up by 10. Physicals included. So you can have an 80 speed, takeover gives you a 90 speed. Just plus 10 to any of these categories. Team takeover works the same way. Whatever your teammates pick, let's say I pick shooting, my teammate picks finishing as his primary. When we get team take, his finishing goes up 10. And double takeover is still in the game. You could pick shooting twice, that puts it up 20. Or you could pick shooting and playmaking, it adds plus 10 to each. If you made it this far in the video, give me a roof, cause you a dog for making it this far. Let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments. Overall, the game needs defense. That's all that I can say. Offense needs to be more fun, and they trying to do that with my favorite addition of the game, them little spinning shots getting a boost only in mid-range. He specifically said he only boosted fades from the mid-range, and he nerfed them from the three. So that way you could get like step back mid-range, post-fade mid-range, spin around mid-range. Like this just makes shot creators that play in the mid-range area have more fun. Ultimately, let me know what y'all think. The takeover removing from abilities to just attribute boost, I get it. I don't know if I like it until I get to play the game. Other than that, chat, let's get out of here.